Welcome to this month's installment of Brass Chats, brought to you by Monster Oil. What is this? 21 year? Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Brass Chats. Today's guest boasts a huge uh, active resume filled with things like international soloist, uh, organizer and conductor of the Brass Days Festival at the Moscow Conservatory. He is the first Russian to perform as a soloist with the United States Marine Band, whoever, whoever they are. Um, the first Russian elected to the board of the International Trumpet Guild. And his main gig, he was appointed at the hilariously young age of 20 to the principal trumpet chair of the Russian National Orchestra. Everyone, please, we're delighted to have Vladislav Lavrik. Thank you very much. Thank you. How badly did I pronounce your name? That was very good. Was it good? Yes, almost uh, the best rate. Oh, well, we, <laughs> that's what we do, we try our best. I mean, we, yes, after drinks we will have some more uh, okay. uh, pronunciation. My tongue but will loosen up after, you know, a few of these. Uh, yes, my, my mine too, with uh, American pronunciation, so. Your American pronunciation is perfect, you're doing great. Uh, how's your tour going so far? How long have you been in the United States? Uh, we started on uh, 19th of February, I think, so we're about more than 10, 10 days. And we played uh, exactly half of the concert, so we have 16 concerts. And now today is the um, actually final concert with our main conductor Mikhail Plitnyov in the Carnegie Hall. Yeah. And there was very good. Uh, there were very good concerts in San Francisco, uh, San Francisco Davis Hall, two concerts, and uh, Kansas uh, City, uh, Nebraska, and we did a lot of a lot of. You know, good performances, I think, and with good reviews and with great soloists, uh, Yu Jia Wang and uh, pianist, and uh, we are happy. And this is our, our anniversary tour, so right, we like yes right? for the orchestra. And to me, it's also um, you know uh, uh, honor to 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 be at this tour and to work with the orchestra uh, because this is this is really. Fine orchestra, sure. and uh, I'm working here for 16 years. Yeah, like yeah, you got the job in uh, 2000, I think, right? Yeah, but I came actually. I played an uh, audition uh, in my birthday uh, on 99. That's really funny. I actually won my audition very close to my birthday, two days yeah? after my audition. Ah, that's great. So, so that's a... tell, take me through that. How? What's that audition process for you? I actually oh, want to start with the You better not to know about this audition <laughs> because there are not so many players as in the United States. So okay. usually they invite some people who they you know heard about and uh, know about. They play solo, they play in the orchestra. So that happened with me. I played PowerPoint of Ecstasy just one day before my audition. And so the manager from the orchestra and the inspector, they came to the concert and listen to me and also before this I had a recital playing some serious stuff with the trumpet so they, they invited me to, to participate like a, a small audition so there were several people that they invited and I played uh, with, uh, with the orchestra so they invited me and half of the year I was just you know as a time how to say uh, They they try they were trying. Oh, just a trial week. Trial trial yeah. month, month, two three months. Two three months. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So then then I started to play first trumpet and it was to me it was very interesting. But I, I was I was thinking about being a soloist, but still I'm doing a solo and I am playing a trial orchestra. So sure. I'm trying to do this. It's a different work, and uh, I mean different playing way of playing orchestra and solo. Right. Have you done much orchestral playing before? Uh, just in the orchestra, um, wind orchestra, and, sure, like uh, and yeah, schools yeah. and symphony orchestra uh, were several times with the for kids orchestra. But we did also some tours, so it was not big experience. But couple years, uh, rarely we met with the conductor and with the orchestra, with just kids with the kids. So this is professional orchestra, my first and the only orchestra that I work. As a series. But I many times I invited to some festival orchestras and some extra, you know, that's for everyone, I think. Were you in school when you went through this audition process? This I was in the second grade of uh, conservatory. I was 19, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, tell me about your early musical education. I mean, here in America, like I'm sure you know, we have school bands, you have, you know, maybe a community band or orchestra, a regional kind of thing. 
Tell me about how it is. When do you start your instrument in Russia? How to tell, explain to me some of that. That's my, my family is music, uh, the, 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 the music um, professional players and. Um, uh, my father is trumpet and also conductor, but with a military direction. And uh, we were traveling. He was sent to different different parts of uh, not only Russia. We went to Mongolia, lived there for four years, and we lived five years in Siberia. So uh, my mother is pianist, and uh, at first I started actually to sing at the age of three with a band of my father, and uh, then at the age of five or six I started to play piano so there was very good with piano so I, I was you know uh, studying at the school and finishing the school as a pianist and then my father said would it be possible to be like Mikhail Plitnyov as a pianist uh, or I don't know Borovitz uh, uh, Richter but uh, he decided to give me a trumpet and he he knew about the teacher who was the one of the best teacher in, in Russia, and he is still alive. And my teacher was uh, Paut of Anatoly Paut. Of he, he is a very good teacher. Also, and my father. Was this? It's in, in Moscow. Yeah, in we started. Yeah, in, 19, in 89, uh, 1989. I was. We, we came to Moscow, and uh, we came. And, um, and how old were you when you started playing trumpet? It's nine. At nine. Nine. nine years old. Right? Yeah, yeah. Right. So I so. want to know how politics affect. Um, how your orchestra works, how it operates, and mm -hmm. feel free to say something provocative about, you know, Putin or Donald mm -hmm. Trump or anything like that. Anything Are you, you sure? Want. Yeah, oh, of course. I'm living there. I'm yeah. not here. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> well, you need to be friends with them. This is the best way. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because if you're not friends, you. It will be hard for you to do this, to do your things that you want. You, the, 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 with the government, you need to play several concerts. They, they make you, you know, like, I don't know, 50, I don't, I don't remember how many concerts, but you need to play in some amount of, of uh, concerts uh, in Russia. A national festival, a day of national uh, Yes, like they, that, they yeah. just ask, yes, and you put them on your calendar, and, and, and so if you, you need to, this is like a rule. Right, you just have to go. Yes, and uh, other concerts there under, you know, Chikovs and under Philharmonie, Moscow Philharmonie, one of the ma major orga organizations who organize the concert for these orchestras. And uh, there's actually the leader of all Philharmonies, the main. So, Moscow Philharmonie operates the soloist orchestras, halls, and some festivals. And, um, this is the two main, well, main uh, concert organi organizers. I mean, government with their concert, uh, Philharmonia with their concert, and also orchestra, uh, for example, as uh, uh, our orchestra plays its own festival and its own concerts that they organize. We have a big festival in Russia, Russian National Orchestra, big festival, they call it like this. And it's... Uh, uh, you know, five, six, seven concerts per you know, one month uh, in a big stage and uh, with a big artist. And uh, sometimes I do some conducting with them and playing solo. And we hope next time I will be conducting the uh, uh, host planets, the planets with in 3D. We're doing 3D with the 3D glasses for everyone in the audience, and there will be. That's like fantastic. this, yeah. I saw on your calendar you're going to be conducting a memorial concert for the uh, the tragedy at Chernobyl. That's coming up in April. Is that right? Ah, uh, yeah. How do you know this? I saw it on on the internet somewhere. Well, there are Actually, some on the Russian National Orchestra website. Their, uh, their website. Okay. You can look okay. at the calendar. Yeah, 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 yeah. And your picture comes up. You look very. You got the baton right there. It's, uh, Without, uh, yeah, different looking. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. So is is, is the plan is going to be on that program or? No, 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 it's festival in September, which is a big, big, big hall, okay. and uh, we hope, and probably uh, uh, American composer Gordon Getty, and he is, you know, sponsor of uh, San Francisco Symphony, well, he is a rich man, and he composed some music, and sometimes very good, so it will be also.
in 3D right. and also La Mer by Debussy. That's great. So lots of times, I mean, we're adding these 3D things, you know, to these performances to gain popularity. You know, That's right. That's the future of this, of the music combines with different, uh, you know... Different, different mediums. Medium, yeah. yeah. So painting, I don't know, 3D, 4D, with the smell. We even were talking uh, to some people uh, who are working with smells. So it's it's difficult for them to 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 to, to fill in the hole, the hole, the, the hole yeah. because it's huge. Right. But for the part here, they could do this. So they can put the, the, uh, the needed smell and then can take it out. Interesting. So different. And it's uh, not, well, it's... it's I'm as, trying to as think they of say, how they would do that, and all I can think is so people it's, in it's little red jackets going around going... <laughs> <laughs> and it like smells pain, like pain a... Bowl. Yeah. Pain bowl. Pain bowl, smell bowl. Yeah, right, right, right. Well, what piece would need smell with it? Well, they, they, were, they did a lot of things, like they were a, a, a painting about the war. Okay. And so they want the smell of the war. Oh, so gunpowder. Uh, yes, you know. and they did it. So when you see it, the picture, the smell comes. Uh, the, uh, the, you you like an war. Yeah, wow. some some grass. You know, grass. They have shown cool. grass. So, so yeah. I That's think it's the future. Okay, there you go. That's a great idea. Um, all right, I want to get away from some of that, and I want to talk to you about your trumpet skills. How did you get good? What made you the trumpet player that you are today? I know it's, look, I hate that question. Somebody asked me that question, I don't even know where to start. But, uh, yeah, there, <laughs> there you go. But, I mean, there's a lot of stuff. What do you find, you know, was something that uh, really helped you become I'm you not um, happy with my playing all the time, so. Good, not, that's yeah. why you're good. Well, uh, maybe. Well, first of all, I'm trying to understand my, mm, my feelings, how, how I can, what I can do. I mean, I, I don't play really everything because I don't play really high. I don't play really. I don't know. But uh, uh, in, in, in every year, I'm, I'm just finding new things, and I'm now practicing. I think more and more, so I can schedule my my um, rehearsal by practicing. Uh, well, when after uh, you know, I had uh, I had. Um, Master classes. Well, I I, I, t I took master class from Charlie Geyer and Barbara Butler. Oh yeah. And they gave me a lot with you know position of here. So I started you know I changed a little bit with. Interesting. Uh, and as they say, you 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 get up in the morning and you need to build your house again with uh, every block and then, so it. But you asking about my. I'm asking what you're working on now. You're fundamentally, what are you like? What's on your practice stand? Well, I will have a big uh, concert, my recital soon in, in Moscow Conservatory with a uh, big program. I am playing Kindermeet. I play some Baroque stuff. I play. I will play. I think uh, um, Frank uh, violin sonata. That's that, that's for me to be interesting and uh, some other Russian sonata and uh, 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 what well, I have a lot of concerts with orchestras with uh, conducting and playing there will be also program with uh, um, Rhapsody in Blue by you know yeah, it's, you it's have very, a, an, an arrangement of that right yes who, it's, who a, it's a Doc Schutzer oh Doc yeah. yeah right and uh, uh, well. The standard repertoire with uh, Haydn, with uh, I have Haydn Hummel, I have um, Pachmutelo concert. It's very good. That I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm playing sometimes. I want to ask you about about Tarantino as well. How does he, how has he influenced your life and your career? Oh, he was well, well, the God alive when he was alive, and I was participating in this competition. He was in the jury, and the uh, uh, chef on the jury, and. Uh, I remember that that <laughs> one moment that I then I played the first round before they announced the who who is the who is the winner, and I was a kid about 14 something 15, and he was <laughs> going out of the of the school where we were playing the the, the competition, and he was <laughs> just you know I was afraid and he was like a star, but I was playing I mean getting better and better, but and he was just like showing me like this. 
and that was also to me like going forward. And then I participated in his uh, master classes, and um, he uh, like influenced with his recordings, with his uh, attitude to the profession, and his uh, smart. How was he? You know, clever and. Uh, it was the, the number one for me now. And I think number one, well, number one as a as a hero, as a as a, as a star, as a uh, leader, and um, he really influenced influenced me by his recording and by meeting with this competition and with master classes. Well, to to to, to me, his influence with his music, with his music, with his. Uh, uh, Understanding the music that he he lives, he he, he his music is in every note. That the, it's life. That's every note. There's no special. There's always something something that he wants to talk to through his music. Because sometimes I can hear the music, and unfortunately I can hear this in the American musician, which great players. They are great players, but sometimes you know it's like in a box with a precise playing, in, uh, intonation, articulation, I don't know, everything, but I cannot feel the music. So, so that's, that's, the, 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 that's how, I, how I understand the, the, the real music, what is for me. Music is like language, you're talking through. Now I'm talking with my you know, tongue, with my letters that I know, words in English. I can also talk with my music, with my uh, notes from my trumpet. So to you, it's more important to communicate ideas and emotions. No, to me, is yes, sir. Than than it is to be accurate. That's two. Sep that not separate two things. That should be two ways. If you play musically, but you cannot do ability to play, it's not. It's not the music. If you play just accurate and and uh, technique, and it's nothing in your soul, and then you cannot. It's also. I think that's that, that that should be like together. Why the pianists are more musically in general than trumpet players? Because they are starting to play an easy pronunciation, easy uh, playing with you know. It's it's yeah. You, you need to know it's not you know tight and should be like free, but it's not so hard as here because we need to uh, have this muscle. So you need it's to more know. Trumpet players. It's more, yeah, it's it's more difficult, I would say, uh, with technique. So that's why we pay more attention to technique than to musical. That's why I can tell you uh, why pianists, pianists and uh, violin, as I understand, with more, uh, they have more musicality, mu musicality, because with easy pronunciation of the sound. So to make music, you need to have these two things that will develop, will be de developing, uh, you know, uh, close together, it's together, parallel. together. Yeah. yeah. So yes, I think you 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 agree with me. I mean, you you're the I same do. feelings. Yeah. How can you develop that as a player? When I'm at home in my practice room, and I say, well, my technique is horrible. I need to work on my technique. How do you? make sure that you are being musical when you are working on well technique. now as I am experienced guy I can do it you know separate I can do like technique without any music I can so this that's like pay, pay attention to some triple or I don't know legato or slurring I don't know sure. but maybe a less experienced player how would you I would them? yes I would do the exercises playing with uh, with the uh, melodies with how they call it in English? It's like phrasing. Okay. The make you make and the phrases uh, top top points, right? The hot, the highest point. Yep. There are, could be several. There are like sentences, right? Yep. Uh, one one note is like one one letter. Word, yeah. One word is like so. The, the sentence it's like phrase, small phrase. The paragraph is like two. I don't know. Two two, two phrase. Phrases. One one movement. Is like one part of the book uh, or of the story. I don't know. It's and there are some moments that you need to know where the highest. There are a lot of high points. It's like phrasing, and you need to to move like the top points from the movement. This this is like like the well. It's it's. I think it's usual thing. I mean, it's it's common 
everyone knows about it, but we sometimes don't make attention. So to the beginners, I would, I would, I would recommend to play like scales with the phrasing. And every song, I don't know. It's like also phrasing, but you practicing with your technique and also you making some music. Yeah. Well, okay, so what else are you working on? You mentioned a few solos that you're going to be playing with some, uh, with some other music. Now okay. I'm doing I'm, yeah. a lot of interesting things that I can uh, recommend to you. If you play solo with the orchestra, for example, well, I do a lot of conductors also, but <clears throat> now the, there are some things there are some orchestra stuff that was written with solo trumpet so now i i conduct with this and i just turn to the audience and play solo trumpet part from the orchestra it's like uh, yes and it's it's actually going wild for the public uh, there was several pieces that i done like um, uh, no no Hachuturian uh, spartacus you know uh, adagio yep. Arira. You, you know this? Spartacus. Yeah. And there are some, you know, pam pa, la -ra 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 -ram -pa, la -ram. also from the stage, and it's very interesting. So, there are some encores for you, for example, if you play, if you play solo, if you don't conduct. You can, you can also, you know, you can do like anchors. You're conducting it, and then when that part comes up, and it's on like I'm just turning, yeah. And you play it. Yeah, <laughs> that's actually, you know, going forward. I mean, the public loves it. <clears throat> I, I was talking to Sergei Nakaryakov. He is a very musical guy, and he is, uh, he is a great, great trumpet. And he said that he actually he doesn't play this really scale, so you know, exercises. Really? Yeah. But he started as a pianist, so I think he, he might have this. Of course, he is a talented, very talented guy. And, uh, and he was starting with a piano, which helped him to be a, such a musician as he is. And uh, he's unique, something unique here. Maybe he, sometimes he feels it. He's so he athletic. You know, he can go, he can do anything. Fast, slow, very clean. He can jump very nimble. Yeah. Very flexible all the time. Yeah, that's a skill. Yeah, that's a skill. Yeah. Maybe he's not playing, you know, as an orchestra person, but uh, he, he, his sound is more, you know, solo chamber, chamber. Yeah, chamber sound. Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, in my way, I play a little bit in different ways, but it's also interesting for me to play different in the orchestra. When we need to play it straight, you need to play it in an ensemble. Like you, you cannot vibrate, for example. You, you, you need to be as an organ, like like yeah, like, like, like octaves or, or you know harmonies. You need to to be as a straight, and it's really different playing than the solo. And then you go and play solo. You need to play with music, with vibration, with some. So that's interesting. Well, my friend, the time has come for you to be afraid. This is the monster round. So in all our interviews, we do what we call Ah, the yes, round. I got this. So, monster round, Vladislav Lavrik, are you ready? Of Here course. Here we go. Your favorite thing about the United States? Uh, freedom. Favorite thing about Russia? Uh, soul. Favorite composer? Rachmaninoff. What element of Russian life do Americans know the least about? Mm, to survive. <laughs> okay. What is your favorite instrument that is not the trumpet? Voice, I think. Voice. Yeah. Good one. What is your favorite non-musical sound? Kids laughing, kids. Kids laughing? That's a good one. Um, what is your shoe size? Russian shoe size. I know, I, American, I know. Oh, you know ten I and a half. Ten and a half? What is that in Russian shoe size? <laughs> so, uh, 43. 43? I don't know. What does that even mean? What? <laughs> <laughs> they use hectares in America too, so I'm pretty sure. Okay. Teach me a Russian word that you think I will not be able to pronounce. Uh, okay. Claustrophobia. Oh. 
We have that in America too. Yeah. Claustrophobia. <laughs> fear of small, uh, fear of small spaces. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boom. He speaks Russian. I speak Russian. <laughs> All right. No, All that's right. the bad word. Okay. <laughs> Do you have a favorite sport? I like to play soccer. In this. You like to play soccer? Yeah. What position are you? <laughs> Every position. Well, actually, in the front. I mean, the, the, um, the forward. Forward. Yeah. yeah. What's, who's your favorite living trumpet player? Win Marsalis. Who's older, you or the Russian National Orchestra? <laughs> Me. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked a lot about pronunciation in this interview. I want to know, because nobody in the American media knows how to say it, what is the correct pronunciation of the name of the president of Russia? Vladimir. Vladimir. Putin. Putin. Does he know you're here? Uh, <laughs> no. Well, I don't know. Maybe. No, I'm not sure. <laughs> if you could have attended any concert in history, what would you pick? I would say uh, I would like to have uh, Mahler, Mahler Five with Theodor Kurenzis. With who? Theodor Kurenzis. Oh, cool. What's your favorite country to visit? Netherlands. How many trumpets do you own? Four. Yeah, hey, me too. Uh, who is your biggest non-trumpet musical influence? I would say, I don't know. Let's say Rastropovich. Okay, so we have another segment called Would You Rather. This is part of the Monster Round. So you have to say which choice is preferable to you. Would you rather perform the Artunian Concerto in Carnegie Hall with a Harmon mute in the whole time or not play Carnegie Hall? No, I would play. You would play. <laughs> would you rather love a little or be loved a lot? Second, I think. Would you rather be a millionaire with a mean wife or would you rather be homeless with an amazing supermodel wife? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not. Dude, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, these are hard. These are hard. Okay, here's an easy one. Saxophone or euphonium? Saxo. I think. I think. I think saxophone. Would you rather be eaten by sharks or die from a parachuting accident? Sharks. Would you rather drive a Lamborghini every day, or would you rather have Vladimir Putin personally drive you around in a Toyota? Second one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What's your favorite trumpet method book? I'm now. I'm just playing mostly, you know, stamp. More, more oh yeah, stamp. Play a lot, a lot of stamp. Of, yeah. Cool. That's a good one. That's perfect. Uh, what's the hardest piece you've ever played? Hardest piece of music you've ever played? Well, I think the Desenclos, one of the one of the Desenclos, you know. Desenclos. Yep. Yeah. yeah. All right. Maybe. Where would you choose to live if you couldn't live in Russia? If I couldn't live in Russia, maybe United States. All right, last question. If you were president for a day, what would be the first thing you would do? I would do a great show with with orchestras and with 3D, I don't know, with everything like like a big musical show with 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 some symphony of Tchaikovsky, for example. Oh, Tchaikovsky. What's your favorite Tchaikovsky symphony? Uh, my favorite well, the, I think the most favorite is Six, I think. So. All right, so if you're president, I want to see a performance of Chike Six yes. with every Russian orchestra simultaneously playing. Might All right, be. you heard it here first. <laughs> Vladislav Lavrik, thank you so much thank for you. spending time with us. It was a pleasure. Thank you. It was a pleasure to me. Prost. Yeah. All of those.